no matter what party, no matter what leader could stop people from demonstrating, but there's certain places that they shouldn't be demonstrating. You can't block buildings, you can't break the law. And I think all levels of government have to step it up. As a Canadian citizen, I'm ashamed um, in our Prime Minister, Prime Minister Trudeau, and uh, a, lot, a lot of things have to happen. I think the federal government, uh, in general, with regard to the issue of the Middle East, is not doing the appropriate thing. With regard to the encampment, I think it's the McGill administration that has to uh, put on their big boy pants and do the right thing. Alex Alavois reporting for Rebel News. And tonight I'm here in Montreal where Liberal MP Anthony Ausfader held a tongue owl meeting to address the rise of anti-Semitism seen across Canada since the October 7 terrorist attack against Israel. Earlier this afternoon, dueling protests between pro and anti-Israel demonstrations took place in the city at McGill University. For nearly a week, anti-Israel protesters and their far-left activists, including Antifa, have occupied the campus and established an encampment to pressure the the universities to sever ties with the Jewish state. They call for a ceasefire while chanting for a global Antifada revolution, which mean in Arabic, a violent uprising that led to bloody conflicts in the past. Viva, viva Antifada! Viva, viva Palestina! Protesters also chant anti-Semitic slogans and intimidate Jewish students, telling them to go back to their home. My family is from Iraq. When I first covered the tent city, Antifa and their allies tried to prevent myself and my videographer, Guillaume, from bringing you the other side of the story. Premier of Quebec, François Legault, has requested the Montreal SPVM to dismantle the encampment. Dismantle encampments. So far, the federal liberals haven't taken a stand on this issue. And McGill itself has cowardly allowed this festering to continue. There have been calls for liberal MP Housefather to resign from Trudeau Liberal Caucus over the party outright support for the anti-Israel protesters. Hamas has even thanked the government for their cooperation in demanding a ceasefire while the IDF continues searching for the remaining 100 plus hostages. The statement by Canada, Australia, and the New Zealand backing sustainable ceasefire in Gaza. Tonight, we had the chance to engage conversation with Mr. Anthony Ausfader and his constituent. And now let me show you what they have to say tonight. From the very beginning, my request to Miguel was not to allow them to establish an illegal encampment on Miguel because it's a violation of Section 7 of Miguel's Code of Conduct. There's a lot of people that misidentify who's responsible for what. So let's look at this. The decision on whether to invite police onto Miguel campus is a decision of the McGill administration. It is private property. If there is not a criminal act that is known, but rather a violation of McGill's code of conduct, so it's illegal because McGill doesn't allow hateful speech or McGill doesn't allow encampments, only McGill administration can decide when and if to invite police on campus. That's McGill's decision. What Justin Trudeau have done concretely to stop the anti-Israel march that took place all across Canada. I don't think a prime minister could actually stop marches, right? I think demonstrations in the country are part of a freedom of expression, right? But there's places you shouldn't be demonstrating. You shouldn't be demonstrating in front of synagogues or churches or mosques or schools. Um, and we need to have a perimeter around those places to not demonstrate. And I think it's up to the group demonstrating to have sensitivity to not yell things that are hateful to other communities. Um, but we can't, st I don't think any person, no matter what party, no matter what leader could stop people from demonstrating, but there's certain places that they shouldn't be demonstrating. You can't block buildings, you can't break the law. And I think all levels of government have to step it up.
all levels, prime minister, premiers, mayors, we all have to step it up. For those who might not be aware, Yaha Rasak, a Jewish liberal MP, met with the Palestinian terrorist leader Mahmoud Abbas. What is the excuse for Yaha Rasak? What was she even doing there? She's a junior health minister in charge of mental health and addictions. That's her title. Why was she meeting with an anti-Semitic terrorist in the Middle East? But you don't have to go back 50 years for proof of how odious a man this is. Just a few months ago, in the summertime, he gave a major speech where he said Hitler killed the Jews because they deserved it. Um, I think somebody else posted it. I think she was in the picture. I mean, I think that the question is, she was part of a meeting where our foreign minister, Melanie Jolie, went to meet um, uh, Mr. Abbas. And the week before, Blinken had met him and took a picture with him. Look, there's a lot of things you can criticize about the government. Being in a picture, I think, is less important. But I, of course, uh, you know, I, I, I you know, I, I, I wish for Yara's sake she hadn't been in the picture. Mm -hmm. But uh, but I don't think you can criticize somebody who was in the meeting from being in a picture. It's kind of customary for diplomats. And even Stephen Harper took a picture with Mahmoud Abbas. You know, but uh, but again, Mahmoud Abbas has said some pretty horrible things about the Holocaust. And, uh, you know, it's uh, I, I understand why people are very sensitive about it. I also wanted to ask Mr. Ausfader about his thoughts on politicians wearing a kefir while in the House of Commons. Uh, I'm not going to I'm not going to decide what people dress like. I, I live through Quebec where people the government is telling people whether they can wear a kippa and teach in a public school. So I'm not going to tell people what to wear. I think it's the first time in my parliamentary career that I've had a reflection like this, where I truly felt last night that a line had been crossed when my party members got up and cheered and gave a standing ovation to Heather McPherson and the NDP. I started reflecting as to whether or not I belonged. You were questioning yourself where is really your place in the Liberal cabinet. Are you still reflecting on this? No, I, I have announced publicly my decision to stay and I explained why. Um, but of course, as you said, it was very difficult for me. I thought the motion was an egregiously bad motion. I thought we should have just voted against it, which I did. Um, and, uh, and it was a very difficult situation afterwards when, uh, you know, when uh, a standing ovation was given to the NDP sponsor of the motion. And so I don't see politics in black and white. I think a lot of it is gray. You know, um, but that for me was a very difficult moment. I think many of you remember maybe last December where I announced that I was putting forward a motion at the Justice Committee to deal with anti-Semitism so that we would do a study on anti-Semitism focused on college campuses. Finally, a couple of weeks ago, I got the motion passed. And today, we decided that we're moving forward with the study starting next Thursday. And again, it shows that one person, the one person you elect, makes a difference because if it hadn't been, no other MP proposed this, it was me. It had nothing to do with my party or my leader, it had to do with me caring about my community and wanting the House of Commons to focus on this the way American committees have focused on anti-Semitism. So rather than independent. <laughs> I don't know where that came from, but... That in, by the way, independents in the House don't sit on committees, ma'am. So if you run as an independent, you wouldn't be able to do that because you wouldn't sit on a committee. Do you think the federal government is doing enough to battle against anti-Semitism and also the encampment? Never enough, but that's the way life is. Anthony tries his hardest. I think the government will see it the light that anti-Semitism, which has reared its ugly head, has to be pushed back. But he's right, it takes more education because the generation of today doesn't understand what it's doing. Democracy is at stake around the world. The bastion of democracy is in the Middle East, in Israel, surrounded by autocratic dictatorships and some of the young people of today on the university campuses don't seem to understand that if they rise up as anti-Semites, they're also rising up against democracy. They're not doing enough at, at, at all. And it's, it's a travesty of justice. Uh, and unfortunately, as a Canadian citizen, I'm ashamed um, in our prime minister.
Prime Minister Trudeau, and uh, a lot a lot of things have to happen. Uh, whatever is happening today is a canary in a coal mine. Anti-Semitism is a canary in a coal mine. And what have a lot of French Canadian fr friends, and they're afraid for their future because there's an evil that is spreading around the world and something has to be done. Do I think they're doing enough? I don't think that um, the governments at each level are doing enough because it's gone too far in such a quick fashion. So if it would have been stopped sooner because it would have been banned and or if it would have, they would have arrived as soon as the encampment started, they would have had a better opportunity to just destroy it and not let it happen. I think the federal government uh, in general with regard to the issue of the Middle East is not doing the appropriate thing. With regard to the encampment, I think it's the McGill administration that has to uh, put on their big boy pants and do the right thing. The encampment violates McGill's policies, and the administration is has attempted to negotiate, has failed to negotiate with the students, and at this point they have to take other action, which is more robust, in order that all students feel safe in that environment. Le, les gouvernements et surtout les instances locales devraient euh, intervenir beaucoup plus euh, euh, fermement à l'image de ce qui s'est passé aux États-Unis dans le démantèlement de, euh, des universités. So if you are not Canadian and you are here on a working visa or a student visa and you are chanting openly for the death of Jewish people here in Canada, you're not welcome. So you should be deported. So if you agree with that, I invite you to sign our petition at deportamas.com. Sign it and share it.